Roz, you were on the radio call of this game. That James Harden to MB chemistry looking solid in this one. Yeah, James Harden, I think the biggest thing for him is finding his balance and, and trying to stay aggressive while also facilitating for Joel, but also being aggressive for his shot. Hey, Tyrese Maxey has been really empowered with James Harden coming there, just being free, and he's been a closer for this team. He was a huge part of closing out that game against the Lakers. Yeah, and the Sixers win 126-121. And here are the top four teams in the East. So as I mentioned, the Heat are in first place, Sixers and Bucks and Celtics all just half a game back behind them, a game and a half rather, behind them. However, Miami has the easiest remaining schedule among those four teams. All right, we're going five wide here. <laughs> Roz, Matt, Perk, mm. Vince. Uh, you're the expert, so time to put the money where your mouth is. Your personal top four teams in the East right now. Big Perk, let's start with you and find out who you're hot on, beginning with number four. Number four, <clears throat> I'm going with the Brooklyn Nets. You're talking about Kevin Durant, who's arguably the best player in the game with a full-time Kyrie, who's arguably the most skilled player in the game. I put him at number four because Steve Nash still has to prove himself. At number three, I'm going with the 76ers. I think when you look at Joel and B and James Harden, they possibly could be the best duo in the NBA. Tyrese Maxey has come along. All they need is a little bit more from Tobias Harris. And number two, I'm going with the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis Antetokounmpo, the most dominant player in the game today. Drew Holiday is playing well. And also, Chris Middleton is finding his stride. I still, I'm still, i still a little suspect of the others, like Grayson Allen, but I think they'll be all right. And then at number one, I'm going with the Celtics, mm. the best mm. starting five in the game of basketball, best defensive team in the Eastern Conference. Okay, Perk, I like that list. I like that list. I'm going to go a different direction, and you might not like mine as much because Kyrie being back for the next full time was enough for me to knock out the Celtics to five right there. They're red hot. They're defensive minded. Tatum's being great. But that amount of talent on the Nets is enough to, to make me think that they are at number four. The big issue why I just kept them there is because um, continuity, chemistry, we saw against the Grizzlies, that talent is not always enough. The Heat, the, their style of play, they got motor. They go hard. They're defensive. They're tough. They wear on you. That definitely wins in the playoffs. I like their starting unit, but I love the change up and the motor of that second unit and Tyler Hero. 76 just saw them last night, uh, was on the call for the game. Man, they got a lot of a depth of ways to hurt you. Obviously, MVP uh, candidate, <coughs> one of my favorites, Joel Embiid, is anchoring them on offense and defense. They got the pick and roll, the pick and pop with him and James Harden. Tyrese Maxey has become a closer. <laughs> they got a big three low key over there. Tobias Harris can be utilized as a, a primary option with the second unit and certainly a key player in the first unit. And their bench actually is putting together some nice games lately. So they keep that up. I think the 76ers are kind of spicy. And then I got the Bucks at number one. I said this at the top of the season. I'm still saying it now. The Bucks can run this back. They got, you know, returning players. They got the confidence of having won a championship. They got depth. Um, and they have Giannis Antetokounmpo, who's having an MVP season. I don't think we're talking about enough about how great he's been. And yeah, yeah, I mean, Bucks it's a good list. Back. That's my list. <laughs> Matt? <laughs> Uh, disclaimer, 76ers fans, you guys could really be one through four. You just happened to get left off this list this morning. I apologize. Um, I'm going to start with the net. <laughs> I think the fact of, you know, Kyrie full time and the possibility of their health, they can very easily win a championship if everyone's hitting on all cylinders. The Heat, championship experience, leadership, young dogs, blue collar team. I love what they do and they were just there two years ago. The Celtics, Perk, you can attest, it's about getting hot at the right time. And this is the hottest team in basketball going into the playoffs that plays the best defense and has a duo that you can just throw the ball to either one of them. And they're gonna get you a bucket. Last but not least, the Bucks. The champion, when did the championship have to stop going through the team that won the championship the right. previous year? This team Oof. is experienced. I saw what they did to Sacramento. Sacramento had them down 20, and although they're not a good game, a uh, very good team, you just saw what they did. They executed on both ends of the floor. They made the right play. They turned down good shots to get great shots, and they locked down on defense. So that's my top four. And again, sorry, Philly fans. In <laughs> summary, the Eastern Conference. <laughs> For me. Yeah, Vince, sorry. Go ahead, Vince. No, that's cool. For me, I, I, picked this, that put, I put this group together as far as how they're going to finish. And I think this is how they will finish. I still think the Celtics, you know, who are playing great defense, will still be the fourth. What could move up to the third depends on how the Miami Heat want to act because Jason Tatum and, and, and Brown have been playing great basketball offensively. And like Perk said, their defense has been phenomenal. 
three, the Heat, the Heat are the Heat. They've been solid all year. I just think right now they've hit a bump in the road. They may fall just because of just trying to find their way and get that old thing back and get themselves <laughs> ready for the playoffs. <laughs> the Bucks, I agree. The Bucks, you, we, they've been disrespected all year, flying under the radar. So you can't put the champs down and, and just say, uh, I don't know. I, I put them number two because I just think the 76ers, who are number one, are playing great basketball. And I bumped them ahead of the Bucks because of Tobias Harris. We know what MB is going to do. We know what Harden's going to do. We've seen Maxi now excelling, but it was like they need Tobias Harris to step it up. We're seeing him emerge and figure out his role, understanding their role. They have a now three, three and a half players now, which has propelled them for me to be number one right now. I didn't mean to jump you, Vince, but I guess oh, basically sorry. still in summary. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.